after studying this module you will be able to learn the need of income measurement learn the usefulness of income concept identify the difference among various concepts of income and analyze the effect of different concepts of income on the amount of income with the help of an illustration The income measurement is one of the main objectives of accounting. Income represents wealth increase and success of business is indicated by the amount of income generated by business. The higher the income, the greater will be the success of a business enterprise. The IASC is of the view that investors need information on risk and return. employees are interested in their stability and profitability lenders are concerned with loans and interest to be paid whenever it is due customers are interested in continuance of the enterprise the income statement shows the performance of the enterprise that is earnings from operating and non operating sources The most important purpose of net income reporting is that it provides useful information to those who are most interested in financial reports. It distinguishes between capital and income or between stocks and flows. The income is regarded as a guide to a firm's dividend and retention policy and is considered the basis for taxation and redistribution of wealth among individuals economists use these figures in evaluating the allocation of resources information of income is useful in various areas such as number 1 income as a measure of managerial efficiency number 2 income as a guide to future predictions number 3 income as a guide to dividend and retention policy number 4 income as a means of determining taxes 5 and lastly income as a guide to credit worthiness and other economic decisions let us now discuss the different concepts of income measurement the primary focus of financial reporting is information about an enterprise's performance provided by measures of earnings and its components practicing accountants financial analysts and others demand the measurement and publication of income accounting theorists and practitioners have come up with various different concepts of income measurement there is no single concept of income rather there are several concepts the different concepts of income measurement or different types of incomes are number 1 accounting income or business income concept number 2 economic income concept and 3 capital maintenance concept let us discuss these one by one accounting income concept in general income refers to increases in wealth the accounting concept of income is consistent with the everyday use of the term income equals increase in net assets in income approach the net income is determined as the difference between sales revenue and cost related to sales revenue net income is equal to realized revenues of the period minus expenses thus we can say that accounting income is the difference between the realized revenues arising from the transactions of the period and corresponding historical costs 
accounting income is the net increase in owner's equity resulting from the operations of a company. It should be distinguished from the capital contributed to the entity. Income is a net concept. It consists of the revenue generated by the business less losses and less expired costs that contribute to the production of revenue. Accounting income is measured in terms of transactions which the business enterprise enters into with third parties in its operational activities. The transactions relate mainly to sale of goods and services and revenues and costs incurred in providing these sales. All these transactions involve the eventual receipt and payment of cash. All revenues and costs are computed from recorded business transactions and they are also subject to the specific application of accounting principles such as those involved in depreciation and inventory accounting. The approach largely meets the revenue realization principle that is historical cost principle, the matching principle and accounting period postulate. These conventions have received much criticism in recent years because they restrained the usefulness of financial accounting reports for decision making purposes. Steps for computing accounting income. The steps for computing accounting income may be summarized as number 1. Defining the particular accounting period. Accounting period refers to the 12 months time period which may either be the calendar year or normal financial year. Though accounting income may be calculated on quarterly basis or even on monthly or daily basis depending upon the need for calculating income and knowing the directions where the business is moving the most general way is to calculate and compare annual income by following financial year time period that is from 1st April every year to next year 31st March. Number 2 Identifying revenues of the accounting period selected. Accounting income requires recognition of revenues and costs. Generally, the realization principle is used for recognition of revenue. The realization principle is the concept that revenue can only be recognized once the underlying goods or services associated with the revenue have been delivered or rendered respectively. Thus, revenue can only be recognized after it has been earned. Accordingly, the principal revenues are recognized when they are realized or realizable and are earned usually when goods are transferred or services rendered no matter when cash is received. Accrual refers to the assumption that revenues and costs are accrued that is recorded as they are earned or incurred and not as money is received or paid and recorded in the previous year to which they relate. Number 3. Identification of costs. Costs incurred to earn revenue in the specified accounting period have to be identified. Only these costs or expenses which have been associated with that part of revenue earned will have to be taken into account. Those costs which have not yet expired or been utilized in connection with the realization of revenue are not the costs to be used in computing accounting income. Thus, prepaid expenses, inventories and plant represent examples of deferred unallocated cost applying matching principle. After ascertaining all revenues as we did in step 2 
and expenses as done in step 3 incur to earn revenues business income is calculated by applying matching principle matching principle requires that revenues which are recognized through application of realization principle are then related to or matched with relevant and appropriate historical costs economic income concept money income by easily measured does not take into account consideration changes in the value of monetary unit for this economists have focused non determination of real income the economic concept of income is based on hicks concept which was evolved in the year 1946 of income the economic income is a term that is used to describe the amount of income that an entity can comfortably spend during a specified period of time and be in essentially the same financial position at the end of the period as that in the beginning of the period sometimes referred to as surplus this type of income is what is left over after all basic financial commitments are fulfilled and can be spent freely without endangering the entity's financial standing in any way it is important to remember that economic income can include both realized and unrealized income economic income may be expressed as ei is equal to c plus ki minus k2 where ei stands for economic income c is consumption k1 is capital at period 1 k2 is capital at period 2 economic income and hicksian approach follow balance sheet approach of income measurement let us now discuss limitations of economic income better offness term is not well defined the greatest problem lies in measuring the net assets at the beginning and at the end of the period this is a problem regarding the choice of discount factor used in computing the present value of future cash flows ideally the discount factor should reflect accurately the time value of money the variations in the interest rates thus the discounting factor would increase the subjectivity hence will produce entirely different measures of income accurate predictions about the timing of the receipt of future cash flows are difficult to make differences between accounting income and economic income the accounting income recognizes income only when they have been realized on the other hand the economic income since it is based on valuation of all anticipated future benefits recognizes these flows well before they are realized this means that at the point of original investment economic capital will exceed accounting capital by an amount equivalent to the difference between the present value of all anticipated benefit flows and the value of those resources transacted and accounted for at that time the difference represents an unrealized gain which will over time be recognized and accounted for in computing income as the previously anticipated benefit flows are realized accounting income or loss recognizes realized gains and losses and does not recognize unrealized gains and losses economic income or loss recognizes all gains and losses whether realized or unrealized accounting income is an ex post measure that is measured after the event reconciliation between the two concepts attempts have been made by theorists to bring the two concepts together 
David Solomon suggested in the year 1961 the adjustments in the accounting income to derive economic income as shown here. Usefulness of the two concepts in decision making. The conventional accounting concept of income has a limited usefulness because of the conservative or realizable principle. Because of the unrealistic picture drawn by historical cost based financial statements, their utility in decision making is reduced to a great extent. The economic concept of income, on the other hand, takes into consideration the unrealized gains during the period and therefore draws a more realistic picture of the firm. This information is more useful in decision making, but there is likely to be much subjectivity in valuation as per the economist's concepts, particularly in case of assets which have no ready market for sale and purchase. Besides, the economist's concept loses its value under uncertainty. Under such conditions, the accounting concept of income may be very useful in decision making. Both concepts have their own merits and demerits. The next topic is capital maintenance concept. Maintenance of capital by a firm is very necessary in order to survive. The term capital represented by assets refers to stock or a tree while the term income refers to the fruit. As such, by using the concept of capital maintenance, the income for a business enterprise can be defined as the amount which can be drawn from the business maintaining intact the capital that existed at the beginning of the period. Capital at the end of a year should be measured in order to determine the amount that can be distributed without impairing the capital that the firm had at the beginning of the year. Broadly, there are two concepts of capital maintenance. If we assume that the price level has remained more or less constant. But if purchasing power of money has declined appreciably because of high rates of inflation, we shall have two more concepts of capital maintenance which will consider the aspect of declining purchasing power of money. There are four concepts of capital maintenance as shown in the structure. Under the financial concept, Income is equal to the change in the money amount of net assets. If there is no change in the amount of net assets, there is no income. Here, the financial capital is measured in units of money. This explains the money maintenance concept. According to this concept, periodic income should be measured after recovering or maintaining the shareholders equity market. Financial capital maintenance concept assumes a constant or stable unit of measurement to determine the income by comparing the end of the year capital with the beginning capital. Changes in the price levels during the period are not recognized. General purchasing power financial capital maintenance Capital can be said to be maintained only if the capital at the end of the period has the same general purchasing power as capital at the start of the period. This is the GPP money maintenance concept. This concept aims at maintaining the purchasing power of financial capital by continuously updating the historical cost of assets for changes in the value of money. It intends to maintain the shareholders capital in terms of monetary units of constant purchasing power. An enterprise that maintains its net assets at fixed amount of money in periods of inflation or deflation does not remain 
equally well off in terms of purchasing power physical or operating capital maintenance physical or operating capital maintenance is expressed in terms of maintaining the capacity of an enterprise to provide a given physical level of operation to be well off at the end of a period as at the beginning business must have the same quantity of assets rather than the same amount as measured in money terms that is it implies that it must have identical assets operating capacity concept provides that the income should be measured after productive capacity of the enterprise has been maintained intact that is after provision has been made for replacing physical resources exhausted in the course of business operation such income can be distributed without impairing the firm's ability to maintain its operating level this income is also known as sustainable income there are three different interpretations suggested regarding the meaning of physical or operating capacity maintenance number 1 maintaining identical or similar physical assets that the firm presently owns number 2 maintaining the capacity to produce the same volume of goods and services number 3 maintaining the capacity to produce the same value of goods and services general purchasing power physical productive capacity maintenance concept the physical concept under gpp productive capacity maintenance implies the maintenance of the physical productive capacity of the enterprise measured in units of the same purchasing power on the balance sheet the physical maintenance concept requires the valuation of physical assets of the firm at the current or lower recovery value that is the higher of present value or net realizable value to compute income that preserves the physical capital intact the holding gains and losses resulting from increase or decrease in the current costs of the productive capacity of the firm are treated as capital maintenance adjustments the principal difference between the two capital maintenance concepts involves the effect of price changes during a period on assets while held and liabilities while owed under the financial capital concept if the effect of those price changes are recognized they are conceptually holding gains and losses though they are commonly reported under other names and are included in the return on capital under physical concept those changes would be recognized but conceptually would be capital maintenance adjustments that would be included directly in equity and not included in return on capital let us consider an illustration to explain the four concepts of capital maintenance firm a has 1 rupees 1 lakh worth of net assets on january 1 2013 and rupees 1 lakh 50000 worth of net assets on 31st december 2013 2 rupees 1 lakh 20000 worth of net assets are required to maintain the firm's actual productive capacity and 3 the price level has increased 10% during the year let us compute income under the four concepts of capital maintenance under money maintenance financial concept income is equal to rupees 1 lakh 50000 minus rupees 1 lakh which is equal to rupees 50000 under gpp money maintenance financial concept rupees 1 lakh into 110 upon 100 which equals to 1 lakh 10000 and then the adjusted worth of net assets is subtracted 
from net worth of assets on 31st December 2013 that is income under this method is equal to 150000 minus 110000 which is equal to rupees 40000 under productive capacity maintenance income it is income is equal to rupees 150000 minus rupees 120000 which is equal to rupees 30000 under gpp productive capacity maintenance first the required net assets are adjusted for inflation rupees 120000 into 110 upon 100 which equals to 132000 and then this adjusted net worth of required assets is subtracted from the net worth of assets on 31st december 2013 that is income under this method is equal to rupees 150000 minus rupees 132000 which is equal to rupees 18000 methods of measuring income number 1 transaction approach to income measurement the change in assets and liability valuation occurs due to transaction that is receipt or payment of cash the transactions approach in income measurement records changes in assets and liability valuations only as these are the result of transactions here transaction is used to include both internal as well as external transaction external transactions relate to dealings with outside parties and internal transactions arise due to use or conversion of assets within the firm income is external transaction is the amount that the new market valuation replaces the input valuation in internal transaction the value of old asset is transferred to the value of new asset when conversion occurs in external transactions revenues and expenses are recorded as and when they occur advantages of this approach are number 1 product wise profits can be determined separately 2 incomes for internal transactions and external transactions can be stated separately number 3 recording and analyzing the external transactions facilitate better managerial action 4 various statements can be prepared and compared five and lastly it helps to ascertain the types and quantities of assets and liabilities at the end of the period second approach is activities approach to income measurement income is associated with activities and not with transactions activity incomes are recorded during planning purchasing production sales and collection activities activity approach is based on real world concept of event or activity practically speaking activity approach is the extension of transaction approach the main difference between transaction approach and activity approach is that the former is based on reporting process that measures an external event the transaction and the letter is based on real world concept of activity or event in a wider sense neither of these approaches reflect the measurement of income in reality the next approach is the balance sheet approach the present value accounting is a balance sheet approach under this approach increase or decrease in asset and liability values are recognized by discounting future cash flows and the income statement is derived from the balance sheet both the fasbs and iasbs conceptual frameworks are based on the balance sheet approach david solomon summed up several reasons for preferring a balance sheet approach assets and changes 
in them are central to existence and operations of business enterprise. Proponents of the matching view are forced to define revenues and expenses in terms of changes in assets and liabilities. Anthony defines revenues as those additions to entity equity resulting from operating activities of the period that can be reliably measured and he later says that equities are thought of as claims against those assets. The FASB's definition of revenues is revenues are inflows or other enhancements of assets of any entity or settlements of its liabilities or a combination of both from delivering or purchasing goods, rendering services or other activities that constitute the entity's ongoing major or central operations. This is the fundamental reason for taking the balance sheet approach and the last approach is value added approach. Here, income is measured by the value added by a firm in a particular period that is the difference between the value of the product or output and the cost of raw materials, stores and any bought out component which are used in production. For example, the selling price of a product is rupees 75 per unit which uses two components X and Y. X is bought from market at rupees 15 per unit and Y is produced in the same firm at a price of rupees 25 per unit. Thus, values added per unit can be calculated as 75 minus 15 plus 25 which is equal to rupees 35. The value added is distributed as number 1, wages paid to workmen, number 2, depreciation of machinery, number 3, interest paid on capital, number 4, payment of raw materials to suppliers and lastly, profit of the owner. Let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. The primary focus of the financial reporting is information about an enterprise's performance provided by means of earning and its components. There is no single concept of income. Under the accounting concept, income is equal to change in money amount of net assets. It presupposes that there will be no change in the value of money. Accounting concepts of income and value have been influenced mainly by two conventions, the cost and the realization convention. The economists advocate the determination of real income. This income gives people an indication of the amount they can consume without impoverishing themselves. The physical concept of income takes the maintenance of the productive capacity into consideration. A firm should have the capacity to produce the same volume or value of goods and services in the following year as could be produced in the current year. The value added is the market price of the output of an enterprise minus the price of goods and services acquired by transfer from other firms.